Mm -hmm. I think so much of what we learn from the people we speak to have achieved cool things in their life, mm -hmm. you know, always different ways to define success, but inspiring people is there has been something in their life. There has been a moment where they've developed a whole new level of resilience and yep. um, grittiness and mm -hmm. something's come out in that moment that's driven them on to achieve something far greater than mm -hmm. they, they ever could. And I suppose in your position, I'm not a parent, I, I hope to one day be, but I'm not in that position. But I imagine it's quite tricky when you've had so much success, how you build that in your own kids. Yeah. Because you're in a position where you can give them everything and anything they want. Have you thought much about that, about how you parent for resilience? It's, I think it's a bit of a constant sort of battle, mm -hmm. really. Um, I have a... I have a fear generally about kids these days about resilience not just my kids but yeah. this whole generation um, of what a lack of resilience they have and how unworld ready they are and how easily offended they are and, and scared of things you know I, 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 I do think I'm again lucky to be a generation that um, could deal with stuff and, and, and you know um, be okay with hardship and someone saying something I mean, maybe didn't make me feel great, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm always conscious of that. And uh, yeah, I think the biggest thing is um, being able to say no to the kids a lot. And because I think they are aware that they could kind of have a lot of stuff. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes we've maybe been too good to them in terms of like letting them have stuff and then mm -hmm. we try to rein that in and they don't like it because they've been offered it before it's like but last time you, we came here we got this like, oh, right okay well <laughs> you're not this time we're mommy and daddy had a chat and we think you're getting too much stuff whatever you know but like we also you know i'm i want to enjoy a good life for the kids and they have a you know they have a, we have a lovely life and lovely home and uh we go on really nice holidays and yeah. we do do all that stuff but um, I hope with the way they see both my wife and I interact with each other and with other people and how we treat people that they'll, they'll be good, good kids mm -hmm. and they'll, um, you know, um, well, they're not even at that age yet where there's no pocket money involved, anything like that, but that'll be a whole thing of how we deal with that and understanding the value of money and the importance of that and that you do have to work for it. And, and um, you know, I, it's, I certainly won't be just going Right, here you are, you're 18, here's bucket loads of cash. Does that mean I might, you know, help them out with their first cars? I'm sure, but um, I'm not certainly gonna just buy the three of them houses and say, don't Good worry, you're, you're, you're grand, you don't need to work, yeah, no way. Yeah. So we're not quite there yet with any of that, but um, that will creep up on us pretty quick. Yeah. <laughs> okay, just might close my eyes and just pray. <laughs> Ah, gone. Get lucky off a rock. Oh. Yes. Oh, it's back in. It is back in. It's back in. It's in the bunker, yeah. I mean, there's many um, ways to play this hole. You're choking down on this. This is great. Yeah, I'm going to choke down on this and try and just like hit a little high something. Oh, that takes a proper player to do that. Oh, I don't know. Watch me as I <laughs> slice this into the Atlantic. That is a thing of beauty. That's right at it. Get up. Oh. It's on there. I have to, like, that's <laughs> absolutely class. No idea can where I'm going. Can you see the flag? No. I'll give you a line. All right. Oh, I can see it there. Amazing. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, good shot. Thanks. Quite an good unfair effort. bounce. Very good effort. Felt like a very unfair bounce. Nice. What a touch. Oh, it's fantastic. Oof. Beautiful. Thank you. She's got the three. Feels like a good three. You say you've recently come off social media and yep. you know, making pieces like this, I, I love sharing with this audience and the, the audience are, receive it so gratefully. And I truly make, think that these episodes have have a big impact in people's lives but um this probably is for off the camera but i i i hope 
I know I will have made it and be successful in my life the day I can come off social media. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy, isn't it? Because it's such a tool and it's such, if you're trying to build something or spread the word of something like, you know, like you're doing and you, you've got, you know, a, a, a committed following and then you do kind of need it. Mm. I just got to the point with it where I just, well, I deleted it off my phone the week before Christmas. I thought, right, because you know, it's just mindless. You know, we all do yeah, that. Find yeah. yourself in 45 minutes, it's gone. You're just looking at people clean barbecues. <laughs> and you're like, Jesus Christ, man. And then, uh, so I just like, let's get it off the phone. It's still on my iPad. Yeah. And I still contractually had to like post for people I'm associated yeah. with or whatever. So I was like, I'll keep it on. And I went to the Met Gala um, in New York a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. And the next morning, like we all do, I was, I was by myself in a hotel and I woke up and I, on my phone. And I, uh, I was on my iPad because uh, I wanted to see Instagram, whatever. And uh, there was a picture of me on there. And like <laughs> the first comments I saw were like, he looks really fat. Um, he's aging badly. And why is he even there? And I went, you know what? I what? What am I getting from this? Oh my god! And I would like, uh, you know, we bang about resilience and not caring about that sort of thing. But like, yeah. Also, I'm a bit like, why? Why am I putting myself in a position where I, I want to see that? And like, obviously, there's lots of positive stuff too, whatever. Sometimes, yeah. But there's a narcissism in all of us that looks for it, right? Totally. And then, and then we get crashed back down to earth by seeing. They were literally the first three, three things I saw, and I went, mm. and I just on that moment, well, I texted my reps and my publicist have said sorry am i allowed to leave yeah and i said yes i said okay fine and i and i did and i feel really good about it now. that's awesome um you probably replace it with some other thing that you shouldn't be doing yeah <laughs> instead, yeah like, like candy for now, crush yeah exactly, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But for now or the, I, I, I did download some little golf game yeah I'm yeah playing, that's fine. i'm actually playing against random people in the world and, and oh, this cool. like like flicky sort of golf game now and <laughs> that's taking up the time but um, yeah, I think it is probably better for my head. Yeah, yeah. I think that in between, I, I worry about social media because it's all the in-between moments. The other day I was going, I was leaving Sainsbury's in Chiswick yeah. and I was going to my car. And I, I, I'll bore you the details, I'll save you the boring details, but I had this amazing interaction with this man yeah. who was this lovely old guy and we had this really cool conversation all because basically his, his shopping bag collapsed from beneath him and I was there and we were chatting away and yeah. we had all this in common and it was just this wonderful moment in life. And if I had been on my phone and just mindlessly kind of sure. all those in-between moments where you yeah. go from one place to the next, yeah. like on the tube or if yeah. you're in transit somewhere, people used to look up and now people totally look agree. down yeah. and I, I wonder about what impact of losing all those in-between moments yeah. have on us. Ooh. Poll number four. Does sheep a good line? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's right, right up. Yeah, straight over the middle of this hill. Okay. And the uh, green is over the hill and far away. Okay. Definitely with the driver, I reckon Feels like driver you can get day. it pretty close. Oh wow, okay, I think. good. Okay. Yeah, 353 down the breeze. Okay, okay. Show me the way. Go all on. Right, okay. Between the sheep, over the hill. Oh yes, that is a thing of beauty. What a golf shot. Oh, beautiful. Identical lines. It's a wee bit left of yours. Just about, you know, we we're talking about, you know, obviously being in the public eye and, and you've been enormously in the public eye. And in probably quite an extreme way, just given the way that I guess people put you on the pedestal, particularly with the Fifty Shades, I think, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but you know, that, that sort of catapulting into a different stratosphere. Yep. I wonder how your family have coped with that and your wife, how, how does she cope with it? Uh, not watching the movies helps, mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. think, and not, it's sort of just um, immersing yourself too much in the sort of chaos of it, because it is chaos, it's noise. Mm -hmm. It's a big, uncontrollable energy and noise being involved in stuff like that and franchise like that and uh, it seems like it's a thing that you can't have a huge amount of control over so you try to control the things you can which is like maybe it's not helpful for my wife to watch three movies where I'm simulating sex with someone else yeah totally <laughs> so you control that um you know I wasn't on social media at that time I actually went I wasn't on it at all and enjoying during Covid because I was bored like the rest of us mm. so not being on social media around the whole time 
I can control that. So I did that, which was good, helpful, I'd say. Really helpful, I'd say, if I consider like what was probably being said. Um, and uh, yeah, it was kind of a mad, one of those experiences now where I think like, did that really happen? Like, was I that guy in the, in the middle of all that? You know, mm -hmm. that like poor guy who was getting kicked about a bit. You know, I felt like because the movies were, weren't received well. Jeez, they made a ton of money, but you know, and I think that's been backlash sometimes when I say stuff like this by the fans. It's like, why has he always been down in the movie? I'm not, I'm not been down in the movies. I'm not down in the movies, but everyone was. Mm. The fans weren't, the fans loved them and that's great. But I'm being realistic about what the critical response to it was and the general, you know, energy that people bring to me when they talk about the movies. I, I get to see that every day. That's not me being down in the movies or, or I don't regret the movies at all, but uh, there was a, you know, there was a lot of awful stuff said about the movies and about me. And so, so I'm, I'm more aware than anyone else could possibly be about it. So, um, but uh, yeah, it, it's just noise and you've got to find a way of turning that noise down as, as much as you can to, to try to live a normal life. And I think I've come out the back of that experience uh, having learnt a lot and uh, maybe knowing that I don't want to find myself in that position that often. Um, there's a huge pressure that comes with those big sort of tentpole movies that I don't love. Mm. Not the pressure, I love pressure. I don't love the sort of particular type of scrutiny that comes with those sort of characters who are pre beloved mm -hmm. so it's it's interesting you learn a lot and um, I had you know so many great experiences from it um, and there's a world where you could lean into what the uh, the sort of attention that you get from it but I thank God couldn't do that and nor did I want to but we started a family at the exact time Wow so our firstborn was born three days before we started shooting 50 shades oh my goodness. So my life was changing in the most gargantuan way, yeah. but not because of Fifty Shades. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I just happened to have the baby on the Friday morning and started shooting on the Monday. Wow. So life was changing massively, but more because we were having a kid. Yeah, that must have been dad. hard. That must have been really but hard. But it was great to have that focus. It was really hard, hard for all of us. But it was great then to just have like, that was the focus of my life. And then that of course has been the focus of my life for the last 10 years. So this other massive thing was going on with Fifty Shades and all thing, and I was like, lads, I've just, I'm having kids here. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we are, we are in it yeah. as a family and starting that family. Mm -hmm. So in a, the best way, that was the greatest distraction and the greatest focus to have during all that circus. Probably a grinding as well. Massively. Okay, a little flick with a wedge. That's nice. Leave it alone, wind. Sit now, sit, sit. Oh, sit. Back of the green. Lovely shot. Nice. Get down. Get down. Ooh, oh, beautiful. I'll try and get this just in the hole. Oh, that'll be a good idea, yeah. I'm just going to navigate of, this. Sort of sheep poop. poo to get through. Yeah, <laughs> a little practice swinging <laughs> through the poop. It's quite a fresh one. It's fresh. <laughs> Don't disturb it too much. Okay. <laughs> right, let's see what I can do here. Ooh. That's very nice. Yeah, that's fine. Good shot. I want another one. Yeah, I don't have that touch there. Okay, this is Plastic. It's definitely going to swing. Back into the breeze as well. Yeah, see, I just never factor in like wind when I'm putting, really. <laughs> but this is... Go on. Oh, oh what oh. a par. Okay. Very good. Thanks.